You're under arrest. Put your hands where I can see them. Alright, calm down. Nah. Something funny here, this isn't a joke. What do you mean? Put your hands where I can see them. Behind your back. Behind your back. Alright, alright. Let's go, let's go. What is going on? Whoa. Easy, easy. Don't try to resist. I'm not. Calm down. Yeah, it looks like you are. I'm not. Get on the car. Get on the car. I am. I am. Jeez. Ooh. That was, that was in the back of the car. Right. We're going away for a long time. They didn't do anything, Get sir. In the back, yeah, that's what they all say, huh? All right, all right. Go in there. So we're here with Philip Zimbardo, the conductor of the Stanford Prison Experiment. Tell us, Philip, what is the purpose of this experiment? Well, we wanted to see how the development of norms uh, would play out when guards are put into a specific role that they're given. Um, and this all took place in a simulated prison experiment, and it was to see how these people would react. Because we were curious about the question of the Nazis during um, World War II, and how they played in their role when they were told to do these gruesome acts, and why they listened to it. Mm -hmm. So what was the design of this experiment? Well, we had 24 volunteers in this experiment. 12 of them were going to be the guards. 12 of them were going to be the um, prisoners. And as to which role they play, is completely random. We flip a coin. And it's going to go on for two weeks if things go well. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of good material come out of this. We're going to be able to make a lot of good assumptions about this. And I'm looking forward to it. So how do you attract those volunteers? Well, we put out advertisements in the Stanford Daily and the Palo Alto Times offering $15 a day to college male students if they would participate in this experiment. Mm -hmm. So is there any way of them backing out or are they locked in? They can back out. It's completely up to them. Um, We've done background checks on them beforehand to see if they're psychologically able to perform in these roles, and um, it's completely up to them if something goes wrong during the experiment and they feel like it's in their best interest to back out. So what are your predictions on how the experiment will end? This is, uh, I, I predict that we're going to find out that people are put in a role and they think that they become a part of that role, like it's their identity and not a role that they're told to play in. Um, and I think that we're going to find out some interesting things and it's going to prove why the Nazis decided to do what they did. I hope so. So I'm here with soon to be prisoner 68432. That's me. And I just want to ask you a quick question. What made you volunteer for this? Uh, you know, I'm just a college student on campus. I saw the flyers around. I need, some, I need a few more dollars in my pocket. It can't hurt, so might as well. Mm. So what do you expect to come from this experiment? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't have too many expectations going in. It shouldn't be too hard. They say it's some prison. They say it's going to be gruesome, but I can handle it. Nothing too hard. Mm. That's your new name from now on. Get used to it. All right. And this is what you're wearing. Nothing else. Get changed. Let's go. This is where you're living from now on, all right? I don't want to hear any complaining. Because the second you complain, you're going to something a lot smaller. Let's go. Uh, this is where you're eating at. You get two meals a day. Three if you're good. Let's go. Get out. Bathroom break. Let's go. I don't even have to go. Today. Ah, let's go! Get it moving! Get it moving! I feel in there. Hey, feel it here. Shut up. You talking back to me, boy? Get out! What? Drop down and give me 20. 21. Right now. You know 20. You want 50? That's one. No! That's five. That's two. No! I want you putting on. He's the heaviest weights we got, boy. I better see you give me five now. I can't. I. You I... can't? Okay. I need a spawner! I need a you know, although the guards are taking this really serious, it's, it's not that bad. It's kind of like a dorm room, you know? A little bit more rats, a little bit less space, but it's alright. 6A, you better not be sleeping in there, boy! I swear to God, so help me God! I'm not, I'm not, I promise. You're not? I'm not. Oh, I see that head hitting the floor. I'm not. I'm just resting. That's right. Why are you sleeping? I saw a hog the size of Missouri in that toilet. 
You better be cleaning that thing up. I did, I did. I will, I will. Let's go, right now. Just give me a second. Right now. You got, you got 20 seconds to clean that up, or I'm gonna get upset. I'm trying. Clean it up. There's shit everywhere. There's some on the ground. There's mop that. Mop that right there. Get this and move it here. Fist. Fist. You can pick that up and mop over there. Over there, over there, over there. Oh my god, I... I'm here with Prisoner Guard O'Hannessy. Yes. What are your thoughts on the experiment so far? I'm very happy uh, as the role I got. You know, I really feel like I'm doing good with this. And, uh, you know, it feels great having power over people. And, uh, I mean, they deserve it. They're scumbags. You know? What makes you think that they're scumbags? I mean, just look at them. Like, they, like, just not, don't deserve anything in life, you know? They deserve to get bossed around. Look at the way they act. Hmm. Bunch of scumbags. They're in the same position as you less than a week ago, though. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, they weren't meant to be a guard. I was meant to be a guard, you know? Like, this is just who I am, kind of. You know, I'm working into it. All right. You, you're 30 seconds your time is up. What do you mean, 30 seconds? You didn't even turn it on. I'm watching a black screen. I said TV time. I never said instructions. I never gave you instructions. Uh, Let's go. Get in the cage. Get in the cage. Get in the cage. Come on. Come on. These guards are really getting to me. Taking it way too serious. I don't know if I can take this beating anymore. It's 15 bucks a day, so I might have to tough it out. I don't know. This is what we call honesty hour. Look at yourself. Cut your hair. You're ugly. What are you doing with yourself? Get on your knees now! Get on your knees! Get back up! I'm not done! I want you on your knees! You think I am? Get back up! What are you doing? Look at yourself! You're a mess! Get your life in check! Get your life in check! Before I beat you up, I can beat all of you up! You know who I am? Look at me! Look at you! Uh, get at me! Someone let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Prisoner 68452 had to be let go. His reactions went beyond the scope of anything we imagined before even the third day. Things are not looking good. So Ben Boslin. Ben Boslin? Who's that? I'm 68432. No, your name's Ben Boslin. It was just an experiment. You were just escorted out of the experiment. What's going through your mind? My mind is lost. I, I can't even explain what was going on. I was so into my role. I, I am the role. You're eating a leaf. Care to explain why? I'm being fed dog food once, twice a day. This is better. This is close to salad, is it not? I have to get out of that cage. It's a little peculiar, don't you think? No. What's peculiar is what's going on in that basement. That's a real prison. Worse. So do you think you experience what it's like being a prisoner? Yeah. I've experienced hell. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on how the study went? Unfortunately, it had to be cut short after six days, but I think that we did get some very valuable information from this, a lot of really good data that could be used to help us come to this conclusion that a lot of things went on with the Nazis and there's really no straightforward answer as to why, but we definitely got a lot clearer of an image from this experiment. It's just unfortunate that it had to be cut short. Was there any lasting psychological trauma to the volunteers in this experiment? That's why we ended it early, okay? We had to have this thing cut short so that there wouldn't be any psychological trauma. And, you know, I feel like I'm being attacked here. This is, this should be a good interview. Um, there, there's no psychological trauma. We're gonna do a follow-up in 20 years. Everything should check out fine. Um, it's just, they got caught in the moment. Twenty years since you guys participated in the Stanford Prison Experiment. Any noticeable effects on your life today from the, what you did then? Yeah, it changed my life, man. It's, it's crazy, but you don't realize what you could turn into if you just lose your identity. I became an officer and not myself and it changed me and 
It made me realize to never do that again. It's crazy. Once I crazy, signed up, man. once I signed up for that prisoner role, it hasn't left me. Twenty years now, I still feel like a prisoner. Something's up, man. I don't feel good. I can't believe I brought myself to do that. You know, I got way too into the role and uh, a little overpowering. And uh, yeah, looking back on it, I feel very guilty, and it's stuck with me ever since. And uh, you know, I have night terrors about it. And, uh, it's a lot to take in, but, you know, I'm getting over it, year by year, day by day, half hour by half hour.